<laughs> oh, hey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is SRS FICO. And in case you couldn't tell, we're doing something a little bit different with the content today. As you can see, I wanted to try doing a video with a face cam. Because, you know, doing the same thing over and over again is kind of boring. And I don't like boring. Boring is not epic. If you like this sort of content, let me know down in the comments and uh, I'll do it more. And if not, I might still do it more because I'm my own person. I don't give a heck what you say. Anyways, let's get right into it. Did you know we've never made a video on Babe Ruth? Babe Ruth. Ever heard of him? If you're watching this video, chances are you have, especially since he's one of the most famous baseball players of all time. But just in case you haven't, or you simply just like watching videos about cool stuff, let's do a deep dive on the Don Data of Dingers. That's enough D for, for one day. George Herman Ruth Jr. was born in 1895 in the Pigtown section of Baltimore, Maryland. Babe Ruth started his rush to the big time in 1914 when he was signed to the Orioles minor league team. Of course, he was insane, so he was quickly signed to the Red Sox shortly after. And by the end of the 1916 season, he was known as a pretty gosh dang good pitcher who could also hit bombs, which was pretty uncommon back in the day, and continued to be throughout baseball history until, like, right now. Soon after this, though, he decided he wanted to be an outfielder so he would get more playtime as he didn't get as much as he wanted being a pitcher, especially since he once got ejected because he punched an umpire in the face. <laughs> It was the first batter of the whole game. If this is what it takes to keep the guy on field and hitting dingers, so be it. Oh, and by the way, the person that came in to pitch after Babe got kicked out for punching an umpire in the face threw a perfect game. It probably didn't count since Babe walked the first guy, but you know, is what it is. In 1919, Babe broke the single season home run record for the MLB. And directly after this, for some reason, the Red Sox decided to sell him to the Yankees. For some reason, being that the Red Sox owner wanted to fund a Broadway musical. That's not a joke. And oh boy, did they regret this decision. This started the curse of the Bambino, an 86 year dry spell for championships. Yikes, boys. With the Yankees, Babe helped them get seven American League titles and four World Series wins in his 15 year career. Not only did he draw crowds with his impressive amount of ding dong dingers, but he also helped pave the way for baseball's new live ball era. Basically, baseball was getting less boring and more freaking dope. In 1927, he hit 60 home runs, which exceeded his previous record of a single season by just one. It's not hard to tell that Babe was cracked out of his mind. In his career, he led the AL in home runs in a single season 12 times. 12. For his day, Babe was absolutely insane. Taking all these numbers and stuff into account, especially since he was playing during the dead ball era, he tackled some pretty heavy feats. Not to say that it was all sunshine and happiness, he was heavily scrutinized even in his day. And do you want to know why? because he was an arrogant son of a bitch who didn't take his career seriously whatsoever. Ken Burns made a documentary on the history of baseball that detailed fairly well what it was like in the old times of baseball. He wanted to title the episode about Babe, That Big Son of a bitch. Not just because it was a funny title, but it was also an industry nickname for Babe. Let's look at how he treated the sport itself. Bro treated it like a beer league. He was the Dennis Rodman of partying back in his day. Only better at his respective sport. Dude would get absolutely blasted the night before. I don't know where I felt like I get a little drink around here, do you, bud? Show up and then blast every ball out of the park. He, he, was, he was crazy. It was like a game to him. I mean, yeah, baseball is a, a game. You, you, you know what I mean. And yet he still is arguably one of the greatest performers ever in the history of baseball. Baseball's old. There's been thousands and thousands of pros in the 150 years plus of the sport. This alcoholic, hot dog eating, partying slob showed up halfway asleep, drunk off his ass still probably, and put up better numbers than all of them. There's a lot of bolded and italicized sections in his part on baseball reference, and to you newbies out there, that means he was good. In fact, let's show you some of those numbers so you can see how good he really was. Here it comes. Oh, 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 oh. OPS Plus, a stat that normalizes every hitter to each other and takes into account the environment they played in on a scale where 100 is always average. Babe Ruth had 11. 11 seasons over 200. His career OPS Plus is 206, the highest of all time. In 1884, known power hitter Ned Williamson of the Chicago White Stockings 
because Sox was too casual, I guess, hit 27 home runs. Babe Ruth broke this record in 1919 with 29. Then the next year, he broke it with 54. Then the year after that, he broke it with 59. I'm scared. <laughs> Jumping ahead a bit, in 1927, he broke it with 60. Babe Ruth had broken the all-time record for career homers. The mustachioed fellow named Roger Connor ended his career with 138. And Babe Ruth retired with 714. Is that is that right? He took home run hitting and dragged it while it was kicking and screaming straight into the game of baseball. Going back to the dead ball era thing I mentioned earlier, that basically meant that pitching was dominating everybody and the balls were so sus that hitting it out of the park was basically impossible. Babe Ruth, almost on his own, kickstarted home run hitting being popular. Everyone knew who this guy was, in and out of baseball. Moving on from this, another big point of contention in his career is his alleged called shot. Here's the story. In the 1932 World Series, Babe Ruth supposedly, while standing in the batter's box, pointed to the outfield and said that he was going to hit the next ball the pitcher threw to him past the flagpole. And my god, he crushed it way past the flagpole. There is also film that proves he did point, but whether or not he was actually calling a shot or just lied about it later saying he called it is unknown. But something that's not unknown is his sex life. Thank you, MTV. Drip God Babe Ruth did in fact live a very lavish life off the baseball field. Also, he was known to be quite the alcoholic. During the prohibition, nonetheless. It's not hard to search on Google and find plenty of images of him chugging down beers. It's also not very hard to find images of him clearly not taking care of himself, which makes his success that much more interesting. Think about how different athletes, especially baseball players, are today. All the effort that athletes put in all year round to not only get better at the game, but just be generally in better shape than the average Joe. Babe Ruth didn't f with that shit at all. It was just hot dogs, beer, and raw hamburgers for some reason. No hitting drills, no nutrition goals, none of that. Just cheap testicle injections. That's, that's not a joke. He actually tried that. I don't know if that's like an old form of steroids or what that was about. But even with legitimate training and self-care being basically non-existent, he was still the most valuable player in baseball history by wins above replacement. He still holds the record in OPS, OPS plus, and slugging percentage. He was also one of the first five ever in the MLB Hall of Fame. He was also the only one of those five never offered a manager position in his life, a fact you can hear more about in a recent video of ours. But honestly, that's a great microcosm of what everyone in the game thought of him at his time. Really great hitter, but didn't gain the respect of his industry due to his off-field escapades. Which you could use that summary exactly for possibly the best to ever do it, redefining a sport for the next hundred plus years in the process. No matter how you slice it, he was not only an important figure for baseball history, his culture at the time, but American history in general, you could argue. That's the kind of impact a guy who was born before screw bottle caps were even invented had. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And let me know down in the comments if you like this style of content. I really liked doing it, so hopefully you liked watching it just as much as I liked recording it. Anyways, if you made it this far, comments, uh, baby Ruth, like the candy bar. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Also, I love you forever.